Hi everyone, Scott Weaver with Factory Direct Designers Workroom. So I finally made this video for you guys. A lot of people have been asking me, I don't want to put my balances on a board. Can you show me how to put it onto a rod pocket instead? Now this is going to apply with anything that I've, so, I've shown you. Um, swags and jabos, um, box pleated balances, scallop balances, it doesn't matter. You can put this on a rod and I'm going to show you how to do it. Here's one that I actually took off this board right here. Um, well, I didn't actually take it off. I never actually put it on, but I do have to board mount it. But instead, I decided to um, put it onto a regular rod, balance, rod pocket balance. And this is what it looks like. And we're going to show you how to do that in just a moment. So stay tuned. We were with Factory Direct Designers Workroom. Well, it's been a long time since I've done a video, but I'm back and I'm going to share a couple of more um, videos. And th this one um, is going to be on how to do a rod pocket balance, how to take any of my balances that I make, whether it's a custom balance, a swag and jabbo uh, set, and how to turn them into a rod pocket instead of mounting it on a board. I received a uh, call from this uh, lady named Tony. I think her name was Tony Newman. I remember the name Newman because my dog's name is Newman also. And uh, I tried to explain it to her on how to put the pocket on, and I, I failed miserably. So I thought, well, I better do a video to show you how to do it. Now, normally, if you've watched my videos in the past, I like to put everything on a board. So here's a, a balance that I made. Just like this here, it's got a little banding on the bottom. I'm gonna put a welting up on the top. And you notice that I've got it on a board. Right now I just, ha um, just have taken some push pins in here. But normally I would staple this on the board and then I would take this extra fabric and I would bend it in to give it a clean finish. And then I would staple this on to finish the whole thing. If you've watched my videos, you, you've probably noticed all of my balances are done this way. It's just more of a custom look. However, I understand that a lot of you would rather have this on a rod pocket. So, we're going to do that. Um, so, this is the rod that probably many of you would be using, one like this. But you also might be uh, considering using a pole. Now, this rod is going to take an inch and a half pocket. Uh, and, and pretty much so if you're not sure what it's going to take, especially some of these poles are, are, can be different, then take a piece of fabric, put it on there, and stick some pins where you want it, slip it back through, and measure it, and that will give you your pocket size. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. And the way we're going to finish this off, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. But the way we're going to do is we're going to add this to the top, of the balance. So instead of having this welting, we are going to take this and we're going to take this strip and we're going to put it right on here. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And the first step is to measure your rod Make sure your balance fits your rod fine. And you want to cut a strip for, an, for um, a standard rod like this. 
This is going to be an inch and a half pocket. So what you need is an inch and a half plus another inch and a half to go around the pocket plus one inches for sewing. So you need a total of four inches. So you always double it. So if you had, um, an, say, an inch and a half pole, inch and a half pole is actually going to take a three inch pocket. So you'd need three inches to the front, three inches to wrap it around would be six, and an extra inch to, to sew it would be seven. So in this case, it's an inch and a half for the front, an inch and a half to go around the back, and an inch to sew it makes it four inches. And the next thing is you want to make sure you are at least um, one inch uh, over the width so we can bend the material in to give it a clean finish. I elected to do like um, instead of just two inches I gave it three inches just a little extra. So the next step we're going to do is we have to bend in a half inch here and we have to press it down. This is what's going to give us the clean finish on the front of the valance. Now if you had a long strip it might be hard for you to sit here and press it in. So I'm going to show you an easy way on how to get the exact inch and a half that you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the sewing machine. This is for beginners only. Um, I know a lot of you could probably take um, a half inch like this and just press it. But for some of you beginning people you may want to put one um, about a 3 8 in stitch all the way around it that'll make it easier for you to follow so let's head over to the sewing machine and uh, show sewing you. machine so for those of you who are uh, novice at doing this you can purchase a magnet and most of I know I'm using a commercial sewing machine but and a lot of you are probably just using a home sewing machine but there still should be probably a metal plate on here where you can get yourself a magnet and put the magnet on and take your ruler and in this case we're, we're only going to want to put a stitch about three-eighths of an inch not a full half inch so you can take your ruler and stick it so you're just a little under that half inch mark about three-eighths of an inch and we're just going to send this through the machine now you can either send it through the machine with or without the actual thread on there because um, you can just perforate it with the hole with the needle and that would also work too but in this case I already have it threaded I'm just going to use it threaded as it is and I'm just going to stitch it down and all this stitch is is just a little guide for when I press it but see now you've got um, you've got this right here and when you fold it down you fold it down just past that little mark like this and I'll show you better when we get up there and then press it. Just an easy line to follow for so, a if you can see that, but this is the stitch that I put on there. It's right, right here. I can see it. Maybe you can see it on there, but it's straight here. And that's the stitch I'm going to follow as I press it. Now to begin with, I'm going to press this end down first. And you want to press it down, you know, roughly about an inch. I know I, I cut this a little extra, so I'm not going to bother measuring it as long as it looks straight. Just going to eyeball it. Just to give it a clean finish. Then I'm going to take, and I can see my stitch mark. I'm just going to follow that stitch mark. And the reason why I didn't take a full inch, I'm sorry, full half inch when I sewed it is because I want this stitch not to be seen. Now hopefully you can see how I'm following that, that stitch, and the stitch is actually on this side. That's what's just going to give you a good guideline for when you're pressing it that you're getting the exact half inch. Now to be honest with you, because I do this quite often, I don't put the stitch in, I can eyeball the half inch. You could probably eyeball the half inch too. But for the very beginners who might not be able to, uh, I just wanted to show you this, this way of doing it. Now at this time, 
I am not going to bend this down. I'm going to wait because um, when I sew the this pocket onto my valance, I'm not too sure. Sometimes it feeds in, sometimes the valance could stretch. So I don't want to finalize this end yet. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Now there's a couple of options when you put a pocket on. I am going to put this pocket so it's on the very top of this valance. But there are also other ways to doing it. So in other words, when we get this finished, this is going to be on like this, and I'm going to slip my rod through here. However, you may want to elect to put the pocket on the back, which could also be done by taking the unfinished side here, sewing it to the face of it, then flipping it around like so, and sewing it onto the back. The problem that you have with that, it won't work on, a, say, like a swag and jabbo set. And also, you see the stitching going across the valance in the very front of it, which may not be appealing, especially when you have a multicolored one like this. Now, if my valance was all solid brown, I'm using solid brown thread, it may not show up as much. But in this case, it would. So I'm just showing you the easiest way to put the pocket on at this time. So anyhow, let's go back to the sewing machine. Let's sew this on. Now remember we had this set up so it's between, it's really about three-eighths of an inch or it can also be a quarter inch. You, you want your sewing allowance to stay um, at this quarter to three-eighths of an inch. We don't want it to be a half inch right now because we're going to sew it on to the back first using um, between a quarter and three-eighths inch stitch. But then when we flip it over, you'll see we want to cover that stitch that we put on the back. So that's why we want to um, have a smaller sewing allowance when we first start. So we're going to start by sewing this pocket on the back side of the valance. And we're using the side that we did not press. Meaning this is the side that we did press right here. This is the side that we did not press. I'm also using, to start with, the end that I pressed down here as the beginning of the pocket. And we're going to put that even with the valance. And we're just going to sew this right across the valance. Now you can pin it in if you like. I'm not pinning it in. But if you want, you could put pins in this to keep it from moving around. <clears throat> now when you're sewing, this is the first time, I like to keep one hand here and I like to put my other hand in front and I do kind of hold it fairly taut just so the fabric doesn't feed in. Um, but it all depends on the type of fabric that you're using. But you can see I've got my extra um, pocket right here and that's the part that you're going to flip under and sew and that'll give it a clean finish. When I take this out I'll show you what I did. Probably a little hard to see it right now. But that's why I didn't press down this other end. And that's why I cut it longer instead of the exact because this way this way if anything's stretched I don't have to worry about it. So that's what I did. I just finished it. And that way when I come across over here and I finish off my pocket on this side that's already bent in. Well, Actually, the next step I would do is take this and bring it over to the iron and press this down. 
Um, that would give you a better edge if you did that. Um, just kind of press it down. If you're new at sewing, it's a good idea to do that. Stop and do that right now. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to be taking this pocket off and I'm going to be putting it back on the board because <laughs> that's how I do all my balances and that's how this job was sold. So I'm not going to bother with that because, like I say, by the time I get done with this, I'm just going to take it off. This is for you, all for your benefit, not so much for my customer. Okay. So now I'm on to the front of the valance. And, of course, I've got this all pressed down, so that already gave me my clean finish. You can also see where I stitched. Okay, so there's my stitch. So the plan is to bring this over and just cover that stitch here and sew it down. Okay, so that's all we're doing. We're going to take that clean finish and you see the brown right here. I'm going to flip this over and I'm just going to bring it just so you don't see it and I'm going to sew it right down pretty much right over that same stitch. But that's what we're going to follow. Now the other important thing is to make sure that this is pulled fairly taut so you're not catching the back of it um, with the threads. You want to make sure that, and that's why I said you might want to press that seam. You want to make sure that you're not catching extra fabric back here when you're sewing. Now we're going to get rid of this. I'm going to take my fabric. Get all my little threads up in here. And now we're going to tap stitch this on. Again, you want to make sure you're pulling this here, making sure it's not catching any place on the back. And let me get the camera right up close to see if you can see that stitch here. Matter of fact, I'm going to take the camera right off the tripod. I'm going to bring it right around. Hopefully it'll stay focused here. Sorry, it's not focusing good. Okay. All right, so you can see, there's my stitch right here. Right here. And I'm just taking this, and I'm bending it, and I'm stitching it right following that seam right here. Okay, and you can see how close I have that to the edge, just like that. Okay, I'm going to finish this up, and I'll be right back. So this is the uh, end result with our pocket. It's put on, and of course you don't have to use, I just put this a dark color down here because it matches the little half inch bending that I put on the bottom of it. Now, you also, when you flip it over, it also has a nice clean finish on the back as well. And now you can go ahead and you can slip your rod right through here. Like so. And then you can proudly display it if you like. 
Now remember, you can do this on anything. You can do this on any type of a swag. Um, you can even sew your um, two things together on here and then attach it with this one strip. But I wanted to show a way that any of these custom balances that I'm showing you can be made into a rod pocket. So I hope that explains that and just gives you a little clarification. And uh, good luck with all your sewing projects, and I will catch you next time. Thank you. Scott Weaver from Factory Direct Designers Workroom.